The idea was to have a reunion where we'd just see each other, which was based on the first CD came out. At that point, there had only been phone calls and emails to everybody saying, you know, here's what's going to happen. This music that we did all these years ago is finally going to be released. And, and then that was followed by the interest in it, which kind of surprised everybody, I think. We were kind of amazed at the, the interest in what we were doing. And I, I just kind of viewed that CD as sort of a historical footnote. It's, it's really interesting to see what a bunch of young guys from the state of Kansas back in the early 70s were playing this otherworldly stuff, you know, completely out to lunch music. But we got together and we had this reunion and we, you know, I my recollection of what we played that night is kind of dim. <laughs> Did we just... Well, it was things like Evil Ways and Gloria. We were just jamming. I think the, the idea... Midnight Hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. The idea was... It was let's very progressive. A, let's have a party. Well, yeah, you know, we never got to have a party. We were playing Nactalos 21, yeah. right? After yeah. 30 years, I'm curious. So, uh, <laughs> so that was the whole, I think, you know, thrust behind the, the night was let's just get together and have fun. And then we invited, I think, about 150 people and yeah, 300 good, showed yeah, up. Yeah. I mean, it was a it was a great word of mouth buzz and um, we had a lot of fun jamming. And Dwayne Bailey was really the guy that kind of held the whole jam thing together and everybody kind of came and went during the jam. and. We played our CD. It was a lot of fun, um, but I think that was the that was once once we kind of looked around on stage and thought, well, this is kind of neat. That's when we went outside in the parking See, lot. See, because b- before that uh, reunion, I had never entertained any thoughts of us actually getting back together as a band and doing anything. I don't think anybody did. And it yeah. was that night, like I mentioned earlier, we went. I said, let's go out in the parking lot and talk, and, and we just kind of threw out the idea of what would you guys think about getting together and actually doing something. So did you do 7 and 7 is and bang on the reverb unit? Let's <laughs> see, we could do fun, we could like record that song. We'll do a really cool version, nobody's redone really that. This far away from not going to that thing. That CD, the first yeah. party. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and my wife's getting packed and all the instruments are in the car and everything's going and the kids are getting ready and all that. And I'm going, I, I just, I don't know, I can't do this. This, you know, I, I don't want to do this. I just don't. I don't know why I'm just, I don't want to do this. And we actually went down to Kansas City. I don't know if I ever told you guys this or not. For me, it's uh, unique. We went to eat. And I ordered this fabulous <laughs> so meal. That doesn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered this fabulous meal, and it's sitting there in front of me, and it's like, I can't eat this. I cannot eat. I can't. So I went back to the Westport Coffee House. Nobody was there. It was hours before the thing was supposed to start. Dwayne Bailey was there. And I set up my stuff and I just sat there until everybody else started to show up. I just could not. I was just so keyed up that I was going to see you guys again. You know, it was really cool. What's been going on for 30 years? What what have you guys been doing for... I mean, that, that's I, a, I slept. <laughs> <laughs> that's a phenomenally long time to take a break between segments of your career. You know, what's been going on for 30 years? Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> you know, I slept and then I was away. Musically. I was off into football coaching, coached at the college and high school levels. And that's a natural transition. It's a good way. Well, but you know, you'd be amazed at the similarities between bands and football coaches. Of course, football coaches had no perspective of this because none of them have ever been in a band, but it's amazing. You're, it's a group of guys that go and practice every day and they have a product they put out there and they compete and they want recognition and they want success and it's kind of them against the world and it's amazingly similar to rock music. I got rid of all my instruments and began a career as a television broadcast engineer. I just, you know, I, I didn't play anything for 30 years and it's interesting. One interesting thing is that when you called me, just weeks before you called me, the very first time with the news about the first CD and that it was coming out and could you have my permission and all that, um, I thought, you know, I, I think I'm gonna buy a keyboard. So I bought a keyboard and then you called me two weeks later saying, this is happening and it's just like, did I actually know this on some subconscious level or what? Because it's just been pedal to the metal since then. I'm an antique radio collector and I've sold a bunch of that to buy more gear and stuff and uh, really uh, 
gotten into this thing. You asked me what what I've been doing for the last eight years. I said, waiting for you to call. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he isn't kidding either. No. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm just happy to be here working with you guys because obviously I wasn't wasn't there in the beginning. And uh, the, the little anecdote or, or story that I can tell you on my on my involvement or interest in in Kansas and Carrie's music, I. I lived in a pretty musically repressive household, and uh, my mom is a classical violinist, and we were never allowed to to listen to anything other than the classics. So, uh, in a in a swap, I got with a <laughs> with a friend of mine, you know, as as kids of that age are want to do. I traded a bunch of broken HO train cars and some other junk that I had for <laughs> for a bunch of junk that he had and a left overture album. So. I got that and was completely knocked well, out. Touched that it was in there with a pile of his junk. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it was. It's it's been interesting to me because actually Carrie's music and in Kansas that album Left Overture in particular started me on the whole rock odyssey. It was this band that was a big big part of my life for that one brief period, and we had. We had such incredible expectations, and we, we were trying to make it big. We wanted to be a serious contender, you know, and do something nobody had ever done musically. And we just never got heard, and, and that was the way it was left. And then, of course, I got to go on with Kansas, and uh, uh, the dream of having a music career was something I got to experience. But I guess what I feel about that, it, to me now, this is so fun. It's almost like me getting to do it all over again, because now you guys get to experience it, too to go into a, stu a studio and, and make a record and make everything just the way you want it and have it released on a label and you know have an audience and have people appreciate what you do and you get letters and emails from people telling you you know everything from I really like your music to it changed my life and that, that's just a, a great thing to be able to do so I'm real excited for you guys so it's not new but then again it is new because it's such a unique situation and and, and uh, old friendships rekindled and all that. It's, just, it's really cool. I'm, I'm excited about it.